YouTube channel. It's your girl Sid. I am back with another video. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing. Um, no. Rewind. First and foremost, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, including myself. Happy Mother's Day. I pray that you guys are pampering yourselves. I pray that you are really taking the day to reflect on motherhood, your journey and through um to motherhood, in motherhood, all of the goodness. Um, and just taking the time to really pamper yourself, honor yourself, and show yourself some love today, even um, outside of the love that you're receiving from your kids, your your boyfriends, your fiancés, husbands, whomever. But I pray, sorry, I'm a little breathy, that you are taking the time to honor yourself. As you can see, it looks a little different, my background. I am on my um, back porch um, recording today. It's really nice out, so I thought I would come out here today to record a video and really just share something that really, really stuck out to me today, not only in church, but something that was revealed to me of one of the enemy's tactics and how he had me silent for years. Um, <clears throat> and it's just so funny that they spoke on this today. I'm sorry, sorry my voice is a little shaky. Hold on now. I gotta get this together. Anywho, so... Um, and just speak on how he has, how God has really shown me <laughs> just, just, um, in this last couple days of spiritual warfare, last night I did not sleep well at all. It just felt like a, like a presence was in my room that was not of God. And I just kept waking up and kept jumping up, kept waking up and I did not do my due diligence and pray like I needed to, like I really needed to war last night. But I was so tired. I'm like fighting sleep. Jumping up, in and out of sleep. Um, I didn't do what I need to do. And today, it's just so funny how the simple things, simple words can make such a great impact on your life. Simple sermons and things that we know that we should do, but it just hits home a little different when you're in that season, if it makes sense. So today um, at church, they, talk, they talked about speak life. And somewhere along... Um, them speaking and just sharing scripture and sharing um, moments in their lives where they put that that principle to, to work of speaking speaking things and things come to, to, to pass and they just use um, they gave three points of my words create because we are like our creator we are like God in the sense of whatever we speak creates the world that we live in However, we desire to see our world depends on the words that we say to ourselves, say to our children, say to our significant others, say to our mom, say to whoever. That creates the world that we live in. <clears throat> but the one that got me is that my weapon is a voice. My weapon is a voice. My voice is a weapon. And when she said that, this is what I um, wrote down in my notes. I put, and I know for a fact that this is going to be a part somewhere in my book because it just stood out to me because I put book right beside it and it says shut up and shut out. So I just remember, I just remember years, years, I mean years of me being a believer, but I'll have these moments where I'm speaking life, but any other time I will be so caught up in my mind and caught up and the things and the struggles of life that I would not speak anything. And I was going through that recently and I just wrote in my journal the other day, how Lord, I feel like I'm going backwards to that same Sydney who wouldn't say anything. I would just scroll on, <clears throat> scroll on Instagram before TikTok came out, binge watch until my brain hurt. I don't really like to binge watch because it takes me to a place of, and I said nothing's wrong with binge watching. That's not what I'm saying. But for me, it, it I don't like the way it makes me feel. It feels like um, I don't know how to explain it. I wish I had the words, but I just don't like the. It puts me in a brain fog. There we go. It just puts me in a brain fog. What I've been when I watch way too much TV. I'm talking about hours of TV nonstop. I'll stop to scroll, but my brain is is taking in too much. Um, <clears throat> And I was just telling God how I felt, and I felt like I was going backwards. And then when they was, began to say um, and share that word today, it really s stuck with me because it is so easy 
to speak what we see. And that has been my challenge. And I just felt like, God, I'm so alone. I feel so alone in this journey. I feel so alone in this walk. Cause I'm like, how, I don't know how to, I don't know how to be in this season. I don't know how to walk in this season. I don't know how to talk in this season. And these are the things that I'm telling myself, like how am I supposed to do this? But he just continues to remind me and show me a God-sized idea requires God-sized help. And I believe I shared that in another video, but it also requires our participation to speak and create the world that we want to see, even if it goes against everything that we're seeing right now. It's gonna go against, but that's where faith comes in. We're speaking and declaring by faith. And that's something that I really needed today. It's really something that I needed to take hold of is knowing that <clears throat> when I allow the enemy to silence me, because the enemy knows, um, he, he learns from the things that we go through and he knows how to trip us up again because he studies us. He knows how powerful we are more than we do sometimes because he has taken the time to study us, to figure out trigger points, to, to find ways to trip us up. And sometimes it's the same tactics. And if we are unaware, if we're not really tapped into discernment and becoming aware of the fact that oh, this is the same thing that you used to trip me up the last time, we'll be like, this feels, this feels like something new, but it's really not. And so I acknowledged that today. I was like, wow, when God says shut up and shut out, it's meaning you're shutting yourself out of the blessing. You're shutting yourself up by allowing the enemy to play these different scenarios in your mind of life is really not life in right now. It's not really going the way I thought it was. The paths I'm taking is not really going, you know, going the way that I think it should go. And we'll continue to think those thoughts. And th those have been my thoughts these last couple of days. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I've just been like, God, I don't know. I don't really know. Um, I know what you said, but if you look at this and you see that my life is not going the way that you said it was going to go, but we don't know <clears throat> that what well, we do know, God makes us aware that if we allow what we see to interfere with what he's doing, we will miss it. We will miss the opportunity to speak life into our children, speak life into our significant others. And they challenged us to speak something positive over the people in your life daily. Because you're going to rub each other the wrong way. Your kids are going to pluck your nerves. Your fiance, your whoever, your significant other is going to pluck your nerves. These are people who are in your close proximity all the time. It's, it's inevitable. But finding the words to speak life into each other is something that is necessary. It's so vitally important that you do so. And I'm speaking to myself too because I can get so caught up in the what it looks like. And what it feels like sometimes. I'm like, God, this don't even feel good. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> but remembering to take those things back to the Father. But it was such a great reminder to hear, to speak life, that my voice is a weapon, that whatever I do in this life, even if I see it and I don't agree with it or even if i see it and it's not lining up with the word what i think the word says or what god has spoken over me that i will speak it anyway i will speak it anyway even if it doesn't look like whether it be over my business over my health over my children anything any area of your life honestly use the power of the tongue and they they went over that scripture of um guarding your mouth and that was the first time I actually heard that scripture so I'm gonna definitely go back I was in Psalms book of Psalms <clears throat> Let's see. choose your words I think of Psalms 1914 which spoke about guarding your mouths which is so good because we can allow things to slip out of our mouth so easily because it's so easy to do. It's easy to speak what you see because it's right there in front of you or be so realistic. Um, or I'm just being real. I'm just keeping it real. No, keeping it real is speaking what God said. That's the real. That's the truth. Um, 19. Sorry, y'all. That was horrible. Um, no, that's it. No, it wasn't that one. Help me, Lord. Okay, Psalms. Give me one second. 41, three. Yes, yeah, it's Psalms 141, 141, verses three. It says, Set a guard over your mouth, Lord, keep watch 
over the door of my lips. That is how <laughs> conscious, subconscious, how conscious we should be, not subconscious, how conscious we should be about what we allow out of our mouths. It literally means death and life is in the power of our tongues and it's so easy. Like I said, it's so easy and I know this seems like such a simple concept, but it's so powerful because it's either we're saying, speaking life, or for me, for me, I wasn't speaking anything. I was just letting life happen. And that is not good in itself either. I would just let life happen and just wishing and wishing in my mind, like, okay, maybe one day, even if I don't do nothing, maybe some way, maybe somehow this situation will rectify itself. Not only do we have to speak life, but we have to be active participants. <laughs> I was just letting life happen. Like, mm, I'm going to set this one out. We're going to just let this play out how it's going to play out. No, life cannot. You cannot let life happen to you. You have to be active. Speaking <clears throat> and actively participating in your life in order for you to see the life that God designed for you. Speaking what he speaks. Making sure the word is in your heart. Making sure you're taking in the word daily. Making sure you're listening to, to things that are building you up. So that in turn, that you can build those up around you. So um, I mentioned this the other day, the love bank. I think that was Darius Daniels hosting him yesterday. But he was talking about the love bank and how we could be um, depositing so much into other people and they're just making withdrawals um, from you and you just feel so um, not replenished. You feel depleted because of all the withdrawals that are happening, but you always have to refresh yourself with the word of God. Allow yourself to be filled with his presence. And I, and yesterday in worship, I was asking him to fill me up again. I need to be replenished. I feel like I was depleted um, of trying to do this thing alone. And that's how I was feeling. I'm like, Lord, I'm trying to do this all by myself. I feel like I'm trying to do this all by myself. And um, I just needed him to fill me up again. That was my prayer for yesterday. And just to have, whoop, just to have them say today in church to speak life so once you've been filled up begin to speak life whatever you feel within yourself whatever you allow God to fill you up with his spirit with his love with his peace with his joy all of those things begin to speak those out of your life so that you will see them when he says seek first the kingdom we have to find God in every situation we have to seek him out because it's so easy. Evil is, is up front and present in your face. It's up front, it's present, it's there. Negativity up front, present, is there. Sometimes we have to search for those, those treasures, those hidden treasures that are sometimes right in front of your face too. But evil try to make itself <clears throat> so big, so grand. The things that are of the enemy are so grand, so big, so loud. But the, the still, small voice is what we, we have to look for in the day-to-day -day things, in the small things, in the grand things. But we just have to seek him out. Seek you first, the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness. Enjoy peace, love, prosperity, all these things. Health will be added unto you. All. He said all these things. I just started, li I just listed a few. Peace, joy, hope, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> All of that will be added to you, but speak life. So I just wanted to come on here really quickly and share, because your site keeps interrupting. Um, <laughs> come on here, share um, a little bit of what made a huge impact on me today and remind you guys to speak life, because I have allowed the enemy to shut me up for the last couple days. Even in the small things of being tripped up by my flesh, y'all, I've been struggling. <laughs> not to eat ice it may sound simple <laughs> but i've been eating ice and then my teeth were starting to hurt i was like oh let me back it up but the thing is last week i was supposed to be fasting and for three days um last week i played laid it on my heart to fast but in that fast i was just supposed to do a liquid fast and i was going to drink water and juice that was my that was my whole intention and god always shares with me it's not about you focusing on what you can't have but focusing on replenishing your spirit because he knew that i was my spirit was lowly it was weak i was not feeding it properly all of that but <clears throat> in that i allowed my flesh to lead the fast Oh, just if I just get this, just this one time. If I just, I was not 
I was not resisting the temptation. Temptation cannot flee unless you resist it. It says, resist temptation and it will flee. Let me define that really quick. Resist temptation and it will flee. Because I believe. Again, submit yourself then to God. This is James 4. Yep, James 4, but this is saying resist the devil. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He can only have power if you give it to him. And I have given him power through through small things. I give my flesh power through small things of just saying, oh, if I just do this one time, man, I'm going to be nice the whole day. <laughs> I would literally eat ice breakfast, lunch, and dinner like it's a whole meal. Like this, like it was so refreshing, but it was pleasing to my flesh. I was more catering to my flesh than my spirit. And that makes you so weak. That makes you feel lonely. That makes you feel, you know, all the things that you don't want to feel. And it's not saying that you'll ever, never, ever feel that way. But it's just when you do feel the way, that way that you submit those feelings to God. And then, make it, then be, allow him to speak over you. And you speak what he's speaking to you. Because sometimes, I know I said I'm going to end this thing. But sometimes God begins to sing a song over you. And I believe that's him giving you the words to speak life over yourself. Because when I was in the kitchen, just before I started recording, um, Lee Marvin's have, uh, he has his hands on you, begin to begin to be ministered to my spirit. And I began to sing it out loud, humming it. He has his hands on you. He said he'll see you through. When you cry, he's holding you. So lift your head up high, for he will provide. He will provide. He has his hands on you. So I just want to thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. And I will catch you guys next week.